respectable audience, honorable guests. It's a great pleasure for me to be here in front of you to present the topic Global Terrorism. As you can see on the slides, we will have an overview of the context of this theme and then we will go to the research question and we will have an overlook of three terms, terrorism, fatwa and jihad. And the aim of this topic, the aim of this lecture is to have an analysis and a critical look of the fatwa issued by Dr. Muhammad Tahul Qadri. And finally, we will have the concept of jihad in Islam. The UN Secretary General Ban said that missiles, missiles may kill terrorists, but I'm convinced that good governance is what will kill terrorism. After the fall of the Ottoman Empire, the term caliphate returns with the advent of ISIS, Islamic states of Iraq and Syria proclaimed in 2014. With her arrival, the Middle East has become politically more interesting and has a new reversal. The ISIS phenomenon causes many discussions within the theological level of Islamic scholarship. On the one hand, there are traditional scholars who condemn the acts of ISIS, and on the other hand, there are still a small minority of extreme jihadi scholars who declare the actions of ISIS to be valid because, according to them, ulti the ultimate and solely goal of jihad is the battle against the disbelievers. A number of events in the Middle East specifically and the rest of the world in general urge me to talk today about this topic. It's about the notion of terrorism and it, this, this, top, this term is often discussed in media and it will stay important till today. In addition to this, there's a lot of discussion going on within the Islamic theological circles when it comes to the concept of jihad and its application to modern times. The aim of this lecture is to explore, examine and analyze the fatwa on terrorism and suicide bombings issued by Sheikh Al Islam, Professor Dr. Muhammad Tahirul Qadri. Whereas the content of the fatwa is important, the status and position of Dr. Qadri and the context in which this fatwa is produced will also be taken into account, which will show the importance of this topic and its relevance in today's world. Let's have a look on the research question. The research question is how a contemporary approach to counter terrorism can be achieved by understanding fatwa against terrorism and suicide bombings. Let's have a look on the concept of terrorism. In order to understand the fatwa on terrorism and suicide bombings, we will go through the definitions of the notion terrorism, jihad and fatwa. Technically speaking and theoretically, there is no connection between jihad and terrorism. But a small minority of jihadi scholars claim the criminal activities to be lawful against civilians and don't see it as terrorism. Furthermore, they defend it and they own it and call it jihad. Terrorism is basically an activity or a weapon system which has been used by enormous variety of non-state groups, regimes and governments. Histori historically, when we use the term terror, it refers to violence employed by the state against the civilians. G generally, terrorism means violence by non-state groups and networks to achieve political ends. It is usually rooted in a perceived ideological, ethnic, religious grievance that is long-standing. Terrorism is designed to be shocking, disruptive and unconventional. Terrorist networks don't fight in the same way how conventional war or military operations are carried out. Terrorism may draw a little distinction between the hard and the soft targets. Hard targets are actions against the governments, military and police forces. And soft targets are the civilians. Terrorism has basically its roots in conservative religion and sectarianism. Now having a look on global terrorism, it says that global terrorism is defined as acts of crime or violence intended to further politicize religious authorities. The terrorism can consist of threats, violence or intimidation to coerce a government group or society in general. Globalization can be a source of grievance for terrorist organizations. 
Having understood the concept of terrorism, we are going now to the concept of fatwa. And the concept of fatwa is basically a legal opinion, a verdict, and which is, which is, uh, which is issued by an expert Muslim jurist in response from a layman, judge, or ruler. The person who possesses the question is the mustafti, and the request itself is called the istifta. The respondent is the mufti, and the activity is called futia or ifta. In the past, there were competent scholars who produced fatwas, but nowadays this is no longer the case because all kinds of individuals are also independent and produce fatwas without having any authority. There was always some kind of official education and in addition an independent scholarship. That independent scholarship and independent learning is certainly not of lesser importance and it also applies for today. There are state muftis and independent scholars. The latter have more authority and a better reputation than the first just because of their independence. And when it comes to the distinction between moderate and radical scholars, you see both of these among, um, among the state ulama, ulama and the independent ulama. Like the ulama in the, serve, in the service of the Saudi state, there are some radicals to be found. And among independent scholars, you will find all kinds and sizes. In the 19th century, the authority of traditional class of the ulama was undermined by, by modernization wherein the ulama were no longer the teachers and qadis of the Islamic societies. The appearance and role of the ulama was drastically restricted and in, ad in addition they were incorporated into the system of the modern nation state. Al-Azhar became a modern government institution and elsewhere in the Islamic world st structures of state ulamas were cre created. The independence of the state of ulama is very limited to absenteeism. For this reason, they are associated with many people with the regimes which they are also part of, and they are often corrupt and repressive. That means that the independent ulama become more attractive to many believers. And at the same time, there is literacy and unprecedented people have access to elementary education in the, since the second half of the 20th century. So this combination of the failure of the appearance of the traditional class of ulama and the rise of a semi-literate mass makes it logical that there's a rising trend for low-skilled wannabe ulamas. Now having a look to how to institutionalize a fatwa. Historically, when we talk about inst institutionalization, the issuance of a fatwa came from one person, a mufti, a mujtahid. Later on, you see that in the Ottoman Empire, you had also the central authority, the Mufti, who was also called by the name of Shaykh al-Islam. Nowadays, you see the countries who are having their own scholarships and own authority by issuing the fatwas, like the Saudi Arabia, they call their Mufti, Mufti al-Mamlaka. And the Egypt, in Egypt, they are called Mufti al-Misr, or Mufti al-Am. Mufti al now, you see the fatwa institutions are coming into existence since a long time, like fatwa institutions in like World Muslim League in Mecca, the Fatwa Committee of OIC, the European Council for Fatwa and Research, and the Council of Islamic Ideology in Pakistan. Now coming to the topic of this fatwa, and before talking to, about the fatwa, we, we had a discussion about the independent scholarship and the authority, and now, we, uh, keeping this in mind, we say that Sheikh Al Islam, Professor Dr. Muhammad Tahir Al Qadri, he, ha he is an Islamic theolo theologian and studied classical Islamic sciences among traditional scholars, including Mecca, from, including from Mecca, Medina, and Baghdad. Dr. Qadri joined the Qadri Tariqa, which is a Sufi order. Based upon his educational background, he is a follower of the Hanafi school of thought. All the Hanafi jurists, they condemned the terrorism and are against the rebellion. But Dr. Qadri being a Hanafi doesn't mean that he is only defending the case of the Hanafis. He is a world religious leader and he is a world religious authority. 
So when he talks about defending the case of Islam to counter the terrorism, he used the consensus of ulama, the consensus, the majority of the scholars. He obtained his doctoral in Islamic criminal law at the University of Punjab in 1986. Dr. Qadri is also very well known outside Pakistan through his educational work and organizational structure. His organization has a network in many countries and is active in different parts of the world. Now coming to the topic of today, the fatwa against terrorism and suicide bombings. In recent years, much has been done in the fields of religion, religious violence. There, was even, there were even radical organizations asking for a fatwa to the mufti in order to get a green line for suicide attacks. The suicide attacks in Islamic and non-Islamic countries were strongly condemned. But there are still terrorists who claimed and owned those attacks. In the case of Pakistan, both Muslims and non-Muslim were target of the attacks. The scholars who then pronounced fatwa to condemn, to condemn terrorism faced death threats. Among these Pakistani scholars was also Dr. Muhammad Tahirul Qadri. He issued a 600-page fatwa, and this fatwa became a big news, and it received a lot of media attention. And it, and, and it received also a worldwide publicity, and it was of officially endorsed by the Al-Azhar University of Egypt. In his fatwa, Dr. Qadri says that Islam has nothing, nothing to do with terrorism. The terrorists have no religion. And if they claim to be Muslims and still committing suicide attacks, they are disbelievers and inhabitants of the hell. Suicide attacks are categorically prohibited, and the person who does so is not performing the jihad. The terrorists of today follow the ideology of the Kharijites. Dr. Qadri has substantiated his arguments with Quranic verses, prophetic traditions, and the statements of prominent scholars of different streams. This is by no means the first fatwa that has been written against violence and extremism. There have been several written documents to condemn terrorism. But this fatwa was the most detailed one and provided a comprehensive text on Islamic stance of, on terrorism. This fatwa functions as a counter-narrative on the terroristic ideology. And it has such a huge impact that in 2011, the book on world religions, Think, concluded that there are two models about the competing vision of Islam. On the one hand, there is a fatwa of Osama bin Laden who calls for an armed struggle against the Crusaders. On the other hand, Dr. Qadri says that Islam must forsake terrorism because the Muslim world is heading towards catastrophe. Here I would like to describe the, the philosophy of Dr. Qadri about terrorism. He says that terrorism it not, it is not a 24 hours activity. It starts and emerges from conservatism, from narrow-mindedness, which leads towards extremism by trying to impose the ideas in the public. After this extremism, it, when this extremism becomes habitual, the person, the extremist, reaches the level of terrorism. Dr. Qadri claims that labeling the terrorists of today as Kharijites is not merely based upon intellectual reasoning or ijtihad, but this statement is based upon the Quran and the Sunnah, the Nusus. The Kharijites were not only the ones who revolted against Sayyidina Ali radiallahu an, but according to Prophet peace be upon him, he said that the Kharijites will not cease to appear until the last of them comes with the Antichrist, the Jal. So when you meet them in the battlefield, then kill them. They are the worst of the created beings. In another tradition, the Prophet peace be upon him repeated the words, they are the worst of the created beings three times which shows that, that he is pointing out the elimination of them and emphasizing on their evil character and behaviors. The, the core argument of Dr. Qadi's fatwa is that bad actions with good intentions can never be rewarded. Evil cannot become good under any circumstances, nor can oppression transform itself into virtuous deeds due to the goodness of intention. The terrorists are reactionaries of the violence in the Middle East done by the Western powers. They want to fight in the name of revenge, 
but unfortunately they are killing the innocent civilians. Dr. Qadri here makes a distinction between violent and non-violent extremism. He says that, and he mentions a very significant phenomenon and term in his fatwa that mentioning the today's Kharijite people as terrorists, he says that they are the backs, they are people who are sitting behind the scenes in order to give the terrorist financial, moral, physical, and diplomatic support. They are called Al Qadiyya, the sitters. In the early days of Islam, they supported the Kharijites. And now, still, they believe without actually participating in terrorism, they support terrorism. Here, we see that the idea, keep your friend close, but your enemy closer, is wrongly applied and misused. In June 2015, Dr. Qadri launched Islamic curriculum on peace and counter-terrorism. Having understood this concept, we go now to the concept of jihad, which is very well known by everyone that it, is, it, it means a struggle or striving. And there are, more, uh, there are 41 Quranic verses about the, uh, talking about the jihad. The Muslim scholars divided the jihad into two categories, the spiritual struggle and the physical struggle. The focus of spiritual struggle is on the, your, is the focus on the struggle within yourself, nafs, overcoming the evil tendencies of your ego. This is also the battle with the devil, the Satan. And the physical battle is a battle in a warfare, in a, in a battlefield, which means a defensive war. According to the hadith, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said that the greatest jihad is word of truth spoken against a tyrant. He also describes that the jihad of the pen, which, which is done by the scholars, is as worthy as the jihad of the sword. One of the most famous traditions in which the Prophet said that the spiritual jihad, he mentioned that that is as great, the greater jihad in comparison with the physical jihad. Jihad al-Akbar and Jihad al-Asghar. Uh, giving one example from the past that Imam Muhammad bin Idris al-Shafi'i was one of the first scholars in the early Islam who began the legal discussion about whether the jihad was an individual duty or a collective obligation. for al Ain or was it a Fard al-Kifaya? At the end of the 19th century, making a big flash forward to the late 19th century, the Islamic reform movements were established in the Middle East in response to European imperialism. The end of colonialism and the acquisition of independence by most countries after World War II accelerated this drive. The sociological changes distorted traditional ways of Islam and caused traumatic disruptions in Arab communities of the Middle East. Modernization, westernization and secularization were seen as a form of new colonialism. And one of the products and the reactionary on this new colonialism was Sayyid Qutb. He was an important ideologist of the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt and the co-founder of political Islam, as he, as he mentions that by himself. He was influenced by Ibn Taymiyyah's idea of conducting a jihad against a ruler who does not pursue the Sharia. His doctrine is based upon a three concept which is about the Sharia law based on God's sovereignty and social justice and the revolution. And he is, he is against the ignorance. He talks and mentions about the modern jahiliya. Here mentioning that jihad is not a holy war because Dr. Qadri says that this is misused by the Christian mission, missionaries. And, it's, it, and the result of this is that it, is also now, it also came now in the books. People talk about the holy war and Islam never declared the jihad as holy war. When Islam talks about the jihad as a warfare, the Quran and the Hadith, they mention the wordings Qital and Harb. Now there is a big transition from local jihad to global jihad through online jihad in the form of social platform and forums. Osama bin Laden was the one who was influenced by his teachings, by the teachings of Sayyid Qutb, and he was influenced by his basic ideology, and he was the founding leaders of the Al-Qaeda after decades. Now coming to the concluding part, I would like to say that the main idea of terroristic ideology can be tackled through understanding the fatwa against terrorism and peace curriculum 
provided with textual evidences from Quran and Hadith and the consensus of the Islamic jurists. Secondly, the peace curriculum against terrorism can counter the global terrorism through diplomacy, mobilization of NGO, and law enforcement. And finally, an effective response to global terrorism can be made by institutionalizing a peace curriculum and a peace declaration against terrorism and suicide bombings at the global level signed by the world religions. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for listening.